Well, this is the Journey Toll podcast, and I'm your host, Sean Zanotti. I believe life is about the journey, not the destination, to find the journey in every step of the road. The highs and lows, the twists and turns, the ups and downs, it's in that. It's in those moments that makes life so beautiful. Our guest today has a journey of his own. Marquise Moore is an actor, a rapper, a reality TV star. Please help me welcome Marquise to the show. Marquise, thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you for being here. So we are in the midst of the pandemic and it's been over a year of us in this place. I know the entertainment industry has taken a hit just like practically every other component of the industry right now. Um, I know many productions have been halted. Tell me how that's been for you. How have you been juggling and adjusting to life of COVID? Um, and, and you're shooting and you're filming and you're working at the moment. By the grace of God. But um, the adjustment was tough. I think in the beginning it was more panic. Um, I was living in LA and um, I remember calling SAG and it was like no answers on the phone. Didn't really know what was real about the news. And I literally, got sick. So I ended up going to the hospital and I did have COVID. This is like November. Mm -hmm. um, so I was scared just like everybody else. Um, and um, I moved from LA because it shook me up so bad. I moved to Nevada. For some reason, I thought the heat living yeah. like in hotter climates would uh, stop COVID or something. But I moved to Nevada, got a house in Nevada. And um, I just started hustling. Like I started promoting myself more, doing more of my own like marketing and, and really reaching out to producers, writers, directors. I got on Clubhouse, this new app, and I started networking on there. And uh, I made some things happen by the grace of God. So I was able to work through this, this insanity. Do you think that this time, uh, during this time of COVID, during this time of this pandemic, it has caused you to work a bit harder or put your career in your hands a bit more where you're like, I've got to make something happen. I've got it. Something has got to click here. I think it just brought me back to who I always were, was. Um, I always was a hustler. I started out grinding and hustling and doing it on my own. I think me getting into acting and everything kind of like watered me down a little bit. Cause it was like, I didn't have to go as hard. I had a manager, agents, all these people that were doing my work. Um, but with the pandemic, a lot of people, like my old manager, like she took a hiatus for a while. I had to let her go people stopped working. It yeah. was a lot of people at offices that weren't there anymore. Right. Um, right. People at Sony, I was doing some business with Sony and um, they, she wasn't there. She wasn't there anymore. So I had to get back out there and do my own work. I had to start a whole new Instagram page and uh, just grind from the bottom again. It felt good though. I'm not gonna lie. It reminded me who I was. Tell me about that. Why did it feel so good? Cause I mean, I had to get back on these phones. I went from, you know, being a little lazy, I would say, and um, complacent to making a hundred phone calls a day, checking up on people, you know, being useful again, you know, making myself available, um, doing interviews, all of this type of stuff, uh, which is great. I think interacting is what makes, you know, a career. And I wasn't doing that before. I wasn't engaging as much. I think I got a little jaded, uh, but now I'm back, baby. <laughs> <laughs> now you're back. Okay. Give us some of your backstory. You have graced our screens on so many shows, ranging from Tyler Perry's Meet the Browns to The Walking Dead to Snowfall. The list of credits goes on and on and on. How did you get started as an actor? And when did you know this is what you were destined to do? I got started in 2003. Oh, well, no, not three. Six. ATL. Um, Dallas Austin actually put me in my first project. He was doing a project called The Coming Up Roses in Atlanta. It never got picked up, but it was a pilot. Um, and from there, I kind of got the acting bug. I wanted okay. to do it. And I, I used to just hound Dallas Austin in DARP Studios. He had a studio in Atlanta called DARP. For those that don't know who Dallas Austin is, he is responsible for hit records from Michael Jackson to TLC to everybody. And uh, I think that was his first project, him and T-Boz. And um, I was blessed enough to get a role, the role of Austin. The way I got the role was crazy, but they looked me out. Um, and I think when I got that check, that's when I was like, yeah, I think I want to do this for the rest of my life. Like, this is what I'm getting. I got 20000 for this? Wait a minute. So what, how did they find you? I want to know what that story is. I was at Clark Atlanta University, and I was I had a little entrepreneurial endeavor okay. that I was doing there. Um, I don't know if there's like a statute of limitations on that type of stuff. So. Okay. I was, uh, I was hustling. I was bootlegging. Um, yeah. And they were shooting the movie on one, one like the main places where I, I normally would be at. 
And I just was in the in the um casting director's face, like, yo, how long y'all gonna be here today? Like, I got things to do. His name was Ulysses Terrero. And I think I got on his nerves enough where he was like, yo, let me take you to Dallas. And Dallas was like, oh, I know this kid. Da, 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 da. Put him in. Then I had to audition for Chris Abrego. And I'm not Chris Abrego, Chris Robinson. And Chris Robinson was like, I love him. Give him a role. I called my mother. I said, Mom, I'm in a movie. She said, I believe you when I see it. So she finally saw it. <laughs> do you feel that that is the way? Um, do you think it's about who you know as opposed to, you know, in regards to making it or getting roles? Is it definitely more uh, so the relationship or how do you think uh, that works? I don't think it's who you know because you could know a bunch of people and they don't do anything for you. It's it's who respects you. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's like you can know these people, but they, do they know you? They know you. Do they respect you? No, then it's probably not going to happen. But if you get in their faces and you make people respect you for not just for the hell of it, but for what you bring to the table, eventually those same people, even if they don't help you right away, they're going to feel some type of way for not helping you because you stay in their face. And they know entrepreneurs know successful people know somebody who's hungry eventually is going to get their, you know, get their shot. And you want to be a part of that. So. I think more the case happened with me. More people felt like they would miss out, so they were like, "Let me see what he got going on," because this boy's staying everything. Mm -hmm. He's got to stay hustling. You got to stay in these people's faces, and if you're that good, eventually people will be helping. You know, people will reach out to help. You've been on many Tyler Perry shows, Meet the Browns, and currently you're on Tyler Perry's The Pains. What is it like working with Tyler Perry? Can you take us into to that? It's my guy right there. Tyler Perry's a genius. He writes and directs all these episodes. Um, it was an honor watching him. I should just be on set and just watch everything that he does, the way he, just everything, like he's just brilliant. Um, he's probably the hardest working person that I know, period. Um, and he just makes me feel like I need to work 10 times harder. Tyler's genius, like the way he puts his shows together. I learned so much about how to craft shows to the point where now I'm producing my own stuff. Wow, and you learned that from him. Absolutely, him and a few others, John Singleton. I learned from a lot of people took a little pieces from everybody. That's awesome. Does he, um, how does, does he know that he's a, a mentor figure for you as well? I think so. I think so. I think, I mean, honestly, with all the, and I'm going to be frank, with all the negative press that I had before the pains, there, there had to have been conversations where it was like, I'm going to give this kid a shot. They saw all the bad stuff. They saw all the stuff people were saying about me. And I, I know he took a chance on me. So I'm, I'm pretty sure he knows how much of an impact he had on my life. Even at one point when we finished the show, my mom came to set and uh, he looked me in my eyes and he was like, I'm proud of you. To me, that spoke volumes I mean, without saying much. That was saying everything like, okay, so you saw all the stuff I went through and I'm here now, I'm proud of you. So yeah, I think so. I think he knows he's one of my mentors. He's waiting to see what I do next. <laughs> well, let's talk about that some. How does that feel when someone takes a chance on you, someone believes in you, especially when there have been some negative things that, you know, just everybody goes through negative things. Sometimes uh, they just may be more public for some over others. Um, when someone does believe in you and it's Tyler Perry or someone, whoever gives you a shot in this business and consistently does, what does that do for you? How does that make you feel? Blessed blessed i mean in behind closed doors when nobody's looking when nobody's around i'm thanking god every moment every moment i'm very thankful i might people might think i'm one way but i'm very thankful and appreciative for everything that i mean i feel like i'm a, I'm already on borrowed time so any opportunity that i get or receive is a blessing so yeah I, i'm thankful that's the only feeling i can really it's very humbling like i don't deserve it i don't feel like i deserve it so it's like, when I get it, it's like, thank God. That's why I try my best to inspire people, motivate people and give back as much as I can. You know, when nobody's looking, I'm trying to fill a void. You know what I mean? Because people have definitely done that for me. Speaking of that, what are some tips that you can provide to someone who may be listening, um, an actor, and they may be experienced and may not be getting bookings right now. Can you maybe give three to four tips that a person can do to stay focused and not get discouraged uh, and just continue to continue on the grind. Listen, that'd be, I always tell people when people ask me that question, listen, like when, when you get criticism, when you go on auditions and you don't book the role, tell your agent, your manager, if you don't have one, you find out why you didn't get the role. Study the person that got the role. You know what I mean? Find out the things that they're doing that you're not doing. Just listen. If you're in a scene with someone, 
Don't wait to do your part so you can shine. Try to make them look good. The goal isn't for you to look good, it's to make them look good. If you do that consistently enough, people will start to notice you. I've never had a lead role until I just did my first lead role 15 years of acting. And even in that, it doesn't feel like a lead because I'm I'm supporting. You know, it's Ving Rhames, Lisa Ray. To me, they're legends. I'm number two on the call sheet, but I'm like, they're the stars. You know what I mean? You always have to be giving and listening to what the other person is, is, is giving you. I think after a while, those people shine the most. So if you're an actor and you're not booking right now, network with people, listen to critique, and uh, just don't quit. Be crazy enough to make decisions that may be a little weird. As an actor, mm. you gotta really step outside of being cool. Mm. It's not about being cool. It's about making decisions that make people go, hmm. you know what I mean? You wanna yes. stick out, but not in the way of trying to fit in. Yeah. Really stick out. Don't be afraid to really be different. Yeah, that's fair. Who, um, is there someone that you've worked with? Who's your favorite um, co-star? Or who's, who's someone that you've worked uh, with that's taught you a lot? My boy, Nate. Okay. Nate Parker. When I did, I did a movie called Blood Didn't Sign My Name. I was very depressed at the time because I had just dealt with some negative stuff. And I was on set and locked in. And he walked up to me. He said something so simple. He said, less is more. Mm. He said, less is more. Mm. And I understood that it, on so many levels. It wasn't even about acting. It was like, that's my whole life mantra. <laughs> like, yes. less is more. So now when I perform on scenes, I don't really overact. I don't give a lot. I just kind of do things subtly and, and small. And they pick up so big on the camera. And uh, I noticed that Denzel does that. And he studied under Denzel. Mm. So it was, okay. he gave me probably the greatest advice that I could um, ask for. Nate Parker, that's my guy. Okay. How do you deal with fame? Um, when did you realize, okay, I'm famous. Uh, what was that moment like for you? TMZ. That moment was TMZ when I was on TMZ for some negative press. Um, that's when I realized, oh shit, you, you're, this is the fame. This is what it's like. I remember being in a grocery store with my daughter and this lady walked up to me and said, you're a monster. You shouldn't have your daughter. And mm -hmm. rode off in her, in her little cart, white lady. Yeah. I could smile now and, 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 you know, have this conversation, but there was a point in my life where I wouldn't, I didn't want to get out of bed because going outside meant that people that didn't know me would judge me about some shit they didn't know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I had to deal with that every day. I don't know what um, made me, you know what? I do know. I got numb. Mm. So I stopped caring about what anybody said, whether it was true, false, whatever, it didn't bother me. I don't care what people say, I'm just working. I'm just gonna keep working. And then when I realized that's how Hollywood works, as long as you're not really out here doing a bunch of shit, you know what I mean? That's really fucked up and you out here, people gonna talk. As long as you stay focused, you show up to work, you're respectful and people have good things to say about you behind closed doors, you'll be fine. I just don't pay attention to it. I really don't. <laughs> Was that is that tough to do? Is it tough to walk around with blinders? Yeah, hell yeah, you human. Right. It's tough, your circle gets smaller. Yeah. You don't trust your friends and even the ones that are your friends, you make them upset and all your secrets come out. <laughs> so it's like, it's tough. It's the, but it's the game that we chose to be in, you know? Do you have one friend that stuck with you? That's kind of like your ride or die that you actually share I, with her. He passed away oh. two years ago from cancer. He was 36 years old. He died from cancer. I watched him take his last breath. Hmm. Yeah. That was my best friend. My other best friend's doing 40 years in federal prison. Mm. I lost both my friends. That's sad, right? But no. Um, nah. No, it's okay. I understand. I mean, this is this is what this show is about. This is what why we're what this is about. It's about having real conversations and real things happen to real people. Yeah, and I, and it happened. I don't, I don't, my mom, my mother probably is my best friend right now. <laughs> she know if I get another one, I told her, Mom, I gotta replace you, but she's uh, my best friend. Yeah. That's my dog. We talk all the time. Yeah. So in other words, you're saying, yeah, because of your fame, you can't really, even with friends, you can't really just let your guard down like that because you just don't know. You don't know. Yeah. It, it'd be the person you laying down next to in bed. <laughs> that yeah. tells you they love you. That, that will sell you out for a story. So, yeah, I just, it'll, it'll really make you think twice. Like, all that stuff be true, man. Like how fame will turn people against you. I don't feel like I changed at all. At all.
But like Meek Mill said, people didn't ask me for money then either. Or, you know what I mean? It wasn't a money issue then either. So I didn't change. I got a little different with money, but I'm more careful now. I stay to myself. How do you stay grounded? How do you give to yourself fully so that you're able to give fully to others? I don't do enough. Um, I really should do more of that. Uh, but ways I like to stay grounded, I like to swim. That's why every house I live in has to have a pool. Okay. I like to be in the pool. They call us the pool boys. I like to have a pool. Okay. I like yeah. to read. I listen to like motivational stuff. E.T. I don't know if you know who E.T. is. E.T. is the motivational preacher. Every yes. Day. Every I follow morning, him on Instagram. Him. He's a, he's in my he's one of my podcasts I listen to yeah, too. Every morning, morning I'll, I'll start up Alexa. She'll start my day with some ET, and I just yeah. I try to work through it. And then I talk to my kids when I can. I talk to my son mostly, and all I need to do is hear him tell me he's okay, and then I'm I right, I'm good. Do you have a morning routine? Yeah, that's it. I get up. Mm-hmm. I want to almost show you, but we're on a laptop. My bathroom's right there. If he was Come on, the- you can show us. Take us, take, take us into your world. So first thing in the morning, what I do is I steam my face. That's my steamer. Then I go get some coffee. Y'all want to go get some coffee with me? Oh, well. That's my pool table. Okay. I don't play. McGinley does. And then I make some coffee. That's not my room. <laughs> Nice. And that's okay. it. And then I go sit at the pool. I might smoke a cigarette or something. And then I start my day. So that's your that's your morning routine every day. <laughs> that's my morning routine. Then I get the phone calls that either the bullshit or something good. But right. I do it. <laughs> what are you currently working on? I just finished BMF season one. I got a few episodes on that. I can't wait for y'all to see it. Uh, I am a series regular on a show called Legacy. It's featuring Bing Rains, plays my dad. Lisa Ray plays my mother and a bunch of other star studded people. And y'all see it's gonna be dope. When does that come out? When are you when is that project? There's no date for that yet. Okay. Okay. For BMF August. Okay. You have uh-huh. to come back when you do press yeah, for that. Absolutely. Okay. August first, I think, it comes out. So okay. it's gonna be the biggest show on TV. I wanna wrap up with a segment that I'm calling Tell and Tell, which is a play on the word show and tell. What can you tell us that has deeply impacted you something that no one knows about a secret of some sort Ooh, dude. all right let's read say that question maybe you can oh. maybe give us a secret how what's your secret to preparing for your roles how do you prepare for your roles and then how are you then able to release that energy of the role so that you're not carrying that character on As within I release. yourself who says i release Oh, that's what I want to talk to you about. Do you release it? <laughs> no. Mm. It's a part of me. And I channel. I just channel. Okay. And I feel like when people, they think they're creating characters, but they're just tapping into, you know, other spirits. So I just allow them to take up that space. That might go over some people's heads that are listening to. It doesn't go. It doesn't go over mine. So then, basically, so when you're studying for a role and you're into that character, when you're finished with that role, you're it saying don't... it doesn't go anywhere. You're still that character. That becomes well, you. Peace, yeah. Peace of that person is now me. Those experiences, my subconscious can't tell the difference between acting and and you know what's real and what's fake, especially when it's really close to reality. That's that's the danger of it. I've been told that I should probably do something about that, but to me, it makes me a better actor. Honestly. Let me ask you a question about that then. So then on the other side of that, do you have, are you very careful on the roles that you take? Because are you aware that it could possibly shift your character or who you yeah. are? Yeah. I, I try to play roles that are more close to my reality, you know, so I'm more comfortable with them. I'm stretching out now because I just want to have some fun. Like my dream, one of my dream roles is to play Andy Warhol. <laughs> People are like, he's white, so what? I want to play him. They play black people. Why can't I play Andy Warhol? Like, I want to play Elijah Muhammad in a biopic. And the only reason why I'm not all the way going forward with that because I know I'll have to change my lifestyle. It would have to be a complete change. I'm going to do it. It's not right now. Okay. I, I let the roles become a part of me. I think that's what will make me great. That's so amazing. That's that's a great little nugget that you just shared with me. Um, so then I guess when I see actors playing like crazy roles or something that's just off the meter, 
it, you're saying that it, essentially for some people, then they take that on and they that, become that person good, after. Yeah. If really good. If they're really, really good, yeah, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, is there anything else? If someone wants to follow you on their on your journey, how yeah. can they go about doing that? Um, Marquise Moore is my name, M-A-R-K-I-C-E Moore. Um, you could go to Instagram, I'm dot Marquise Moore. I also have Marquise Moore Instagram, but uh, we're gonna get that back right now. I got hacked. I have an album coming out it's called Pool Boy Sons of the Mac. It comes out single de Mayo. Our single Nervous is out now. It's a love song for the ladies about your first kiss. It's a beautiful song. Y'all should listen to it. It's really good. My daughter loves it even. So check it out. Um, what else I got going on? Do you have, do you have, I want to hear the single. You have to share it with us. <laughs> it's on okay. Apple Music, Spotify, all of that stuff. Check it out. It's dope. Mm -hmm. 